This episode is sponsored by FusionAuth. Programmers, you know, those of us who turn our undying commitment to getting insulted by computers into a career, don't code in the cloud. That's the general rule for the developer community, although there are obviously some exceptions, it's imperative you don't email me about being one. So why aren't programmers adopting cloud-hosted development environments? The founder of Warp, a we're going to reinvent the terminal startup, wrote a blog post posing and answering this question. There are serious benefits to writing and running code in the cloud, he wrote. And actually, I don't disagree with that assessment. But Warp's founder largely credits cloud IDEs not catching on to programmers not needing to solve for version skew because, you know, Git exists. It's certainly not your friend, but it does exist, and we all begrudgingly use it while being secretly scared of it. I think there's a deeper reason why developers aren't moving to remote development. Let me illustrate my thinking here by telling you my own story. I've been a grumpy Unix admin for a very long time. Early in my career, developers were using editors like BB Edit, Sublime Text, or later Atom. In the meantime, I didn't really know what environment I'd find myself working in from day to day. I'd be on my laptop one minute, but then I'd be using it to connect via SSH to some recalcitrant Solaris box, and I knew remarkably little about Solaris. But I did know that it's Unix, and therefore that it was going to have some form of VI installed. So I started using VI as my default text editor. Unlike some folks, I did not turn that into a cornerstone of my personality. At that point, it started feeling pretty weird to have a fairly expensive laptop and more or less just use it to run a terminal that would SSH into things. Those early days also predated Docker. Back then, getting an application to work on, as they called it, Mac OS X, it was usually doable because, after all, it was a certified Unix. But it was not fun. On one particularly irritable afternoon at work, I threw my hands in the air and thought, screw this, I'm over it, and I spun up a virtual machine on a server in the data center and then just used that as my development box. And suddenly, a few things happened. My development environment looked a heck of a lot more like production. It had a super fast connection to the internet. And as a special added bonus for me personally, my accident prone self just knocking a drink onto my laptop didn't destroy data that I cared about anymore. I was hooked. Fast forward now to 2022 and I still largely follow this pattern. I wrote the first version of what would become this video while taking a break from working on code for a project somewhere midair above Denver from my iPad because that's the only computer I usually bring with me on trips these days just because that remote workflow is so ingrained in how I think about things. Anything that's code-centric is going to live on a Graviton-based EC2 instance hanging out in US West 2, and the iPad then provides me with basically a thin client. It's little more than a keyboard with a screen attached to it. But getting other people on board with my cloud-based development approach goes over about as well as if I suggested that they smack a baby platypus right in its belt. God, please, no, no! So though I still love VI, as, as I've become more code-centric in recent years, I find myself shifting and biasing towards using Microsoft's Visual Studio Code as my editor of choice these days. But despite numerous attempts, I still can't find a way to make VS Code work comfortably for me in any other scenario than doing local development on my desktop at home. There's just something about the entire ergonomic situation that doesn't work for my use case, so I'm sort of forced to re-examine exactly why so many of us push back against the idea of moving our development workflow into something that's purely cloud. Microsoft and Amazon have certainly tried to drive toward cloud-based development as a best practice. Google hasn't really, given that it's mostly been satisfied with using Google Docs as a code editor. And, and yes, I'm serious. Coding in Google Docs as part of a screening process is part of their process for interviewing software engineers at Google. I can only assume that it's rooted in some archaic form of hazing.
My favorite part of interviewing software engineering candidates to join my team is when I get to be a condescending quack. Every application needs authentication, presumably, but just like deciding to buy a car rather than create your own, there are some things where it's safer not to build it yourself from spare parts. Auth is one of them. In fact, I dare say that doing that with Auth would be awful. Fusion Auth is authentication built for developers by developers. They know how to put developers in the driver's seat, but also how to keep them out of the pilot's seat because everyone flying their own helicopter is both insane and terrifying. What's cool about Fusion Auth is that you can host it yourself anywhere you want, or if you're not into that, they will host it for you in a private, dedicated instance in the cloud instead of a shared service. They have a free version that has no limit on volume, and thousands of applications depend on it today. They know Auth, they're not zeros, if you know what I'm putting down. So before you build it or get stuck with an expensive alternative, Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion. Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion auth. They're not awful. When AWS waded into this space by acquiring Cloud9 and then relaunching it as an AWS service, I was excited to give it a try. But it hasn't stuck with me, and I just don't see Cloud9 being used in the wild. On the other hand, Codespaces, which is GitHub's hosted Visual Studio Code, is great. It's nailed most aspects of the user experience, the pricing's eminently reasonable, and the sign-in process is very low friction. And yet, I find myself reverting to my tried-and-true process more often than I'd like. SSH to an EC2 instance and then use VI to edit files. Why is that? As far as I can tell, it's based on nothing more than simply habit. And I think that's really what our development choices come down to across the board. Habit. By the time someone's working professionally as a software engineer, they've been writing code long enough for habits to form. Their ways of working are more or less ingrained. For something else to supersede that habit, it needs to be one of three things. The first is to be enforced by policy, and we all know that that tends to go over like a lead balloon. The second is a technical requirement that forces a cloud-based development flow. And the third is that doing it a different way is such a significantly better experience that switching becomes a no-brainer. Unfortunately, the experience of cloud development hasn't been transformative breakthrough enough from the developer experience perspective so far. Until and unless that changes, I suspect that driving the adoption of cloud-based development environments is going to be an uphill battle. At least for now, everyone will still be able to demand that their company buy them expensive, top-of-the-line laptops. <laughs>